What up, nerds? Welcome back. My name is Nate in the Wild, and I am so glad to see you back here again. So, listen, it's not exactly a new subject to talk about the only lens you'll ever need, and honestly, the internet is full to the brim with people having that exact discussion, so I really hate to beat that dead horse even more deader, but recently I've been doing things a little bit different, and I did want to talk about why. Now, if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I often find myself carrying my camera gear pretty long distances, and I am also one of those lunatics who thinks hiking uphill is actually fun. More fun than downhill for some reason. I am broken inside. So for obvious reasons, I try my best to limit the amount of camera gear in my bag, but I still refuse to forego a potentially important lens and risk missing the shot. So the default for most people in this scenario would be the holy trinity of lenses. A 16 to 35, 24 to 70, and a 70 to 200. This is honestly the perfect setup because you're covered for every focal length from 16 millimeters to 200 millimeters without missing a beat. But if you're carrying the f2.8 versions of all these, the weight can add up fast. And despite the 16 to 35 millimeter being my absolute favorite lens of all time for landscape photography, it's always bothered me that there's so much overlap between the 24 to 35. It just feels like wasted space in the backpack. So a great option would be to replace the 16 to 35 with the Sony 12 to 24 millimeter F2.8 G Master, which expands your range from 16 to 12 millimeters and it eliminates that overlap at the bottom of the range, but that lens is big, heavy, and just wildly expensive. So what I've been doing recently, and you definitely might think I'm crazy for this, but I've been skipping the 16 to 35 millimeter entirely and just bringing the 14 millimeter f1.8. Now, just hear me out. When I put the effort in to get out somewhere beautiful, I'm gonna want to really shoot it, and that means I'm staying up late to see stars. f2.8 is plenty for stars, but more light is inarguably better, and the extra light from f1.8 versus f2.8 is just absolutely a game changer for astrophotography. It allows for lower ISO, which means cleaner, more printable images, and faster shutter speeds, which means sharper stars with less motion blur. Modern cameras have way more resolution than any of us realistically need also, so even in the instances where 14 mm is a little bit too wide, I feel comfortable cropping in quite a bit before I need to switch to the 24 to 70. Now, you might be saying, hey Nate, what if I got a shot that don't look good at 14, but don't look good at 24, and I really wish there was something in the middle there. Well, great news for you, my 1950s Brooklyn caricature. I frequently find myself expanding my scenes with stitched panoramas. I shoot them all the time, and I even have a tutorial right uh, here on this channel so that you can see how easy they are. This is also where I'd like to mention that sometimes I'll even leave the 14 millimeter at home and opt instead for the 20 millimeter f1.8. It is one of my absolute favorite lenses ever made. It's tiny, it's incredibly sharp, and it is perfect for hiking and camping. 20 millimeters is just wider than 24, enough of an extent that it almost always solves my desire for slightly wider angle, and again, if not, I can always take multiple frames and stitch them together. I will make this decision ahead of time based on where I'm going, because some places like Lufa to Norway are so big that 14 millimeters is mandatory, but uh, places like the Tetons or North Cascades are generally fine with 20 millimeters. Now, in the middle of the range, I stick with the old classic, trusty 24 to 70. The new version from Sony is amazingly compact and lightweight, and this range of focal lengths works for seriously 80% of travel and landscape work. There is a reason this is the most popular zoom lens of all time. It really just makes sense. So now on the upper end again, I get a little weird. The holy trinity here would dictate a 70 to 200. This is the f2.8 G Master Mark II. It's an incredible lens, uh, such a good lens that I own two of them actually. But over the years, I've found that I rarely shoot telephoto in low light conditions requiring f2.8. But I do frequently encounter wildlife that requires a bit more reach than 200 millimeters. This is where the Sony 100 to 400 just knocks it out of the ballpark. Again, I have enough resolution to crop and basically cover that gap between 70 millimeters and 100 millimeters. But having double the reach from 200 to 400 is game-changing, and it's very much worth the drawbacks of slightly more weight and a smaller aperture. 
So for example, this photo I shot of a caribou in Gates of the Arctic National Park in Alaska would not have been possible on a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. It's probably the perfect example of why this lens is so great because I shot this at the full 400 millimeters and the compression of the mountains behind the caribou to me is just perfect. Uh, I actually tried to get a little closer to this caribou to take more of a portrait style shot, but it literally would not let me get within probably 200 meters or so. So a 70 to 200 would have been nearly non-functional or at the very least would have yielded a very different and likely disappointing image. 400 millimeters is also incredibly useful for getting detailed, tight compositions on faraway mountains to show off dramatic lighting. The extra telephoto compression from 400 millimeters versus 200 millimeters can make an ordinary town look like Valhalla, uh, can create incredible compositions for lifestyle shots or draw the moon in to make it look massive. The smaller aperture is probably my main complaint with this lens for nature photography, but to be honest, I haven't yet found a scenario where it causes me to actually miss a shot. I always hike with a small tripod, so for blue hour landscape stuff, I'm content to just slow down my shutter to help keep the ISO low. I tend not to shoot wildlife at all during blue hour, regardless of the aperture available, because the flat light of blue hour just doesn't really call to me personally, so it's not much of a concern for me, but a tripod is a mandatory piece of equipment in my bag, so that ameliorates most of my concerns about the loss of light going with this lens versus the 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8. So that's it. That is my personal holy trinity of landscape lenses, a 14 millimeter f1.8 prime, a 24 to 70, and the 100 to 400. I'm covered for more than double the focal range of the traditional holy trinity with significantly wider aperture on the short end for astrophotography. For me, this is much more versatile, functional, and I can knock out almost any assignment you can dream of when I'm out in nature. Thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Nate in the Wild. If you enjoyed this, please click like and subscribe and then commission Banksy to do a mural of my face. I'll see you next time.